On today's Locked On Texan podcast, we dive into those YouTube comments and let's take a trip back to the past and discover what has been this franchise's biggest mistake. But before we talk about anything Texan, Cody, let's start the show. <laughs> are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome everybody to a Friday edition of the Locked On Texan podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm John Hickman, joined by Cody Davis. We're going to start the show off with getting into the YouTube comments, which I love doing. Cody, you may not love it this week, but I always <laughs> love it. I want to start off with T. York from a couple of days ago. This was going to be position coaches on the rocks. T. York commented, got to get some better locked on hosts in H-Town. Well, T. York, who has commented on the channel 14 times, um, I remember this this comment. Cody never seen Kyle Hamilton play? Question mark. T York, how about you join us on the show one day, man? How about we get you here on the Locked On Texan podcast and talk Texan, and let's see how that works out, right? I, Cody, I'm fine with doing that. I don't know how you feel, but uh, maybe this can be one of those real fan or I'm not gonna call them a fan, but interacting type of Fridays we can get them on. I think that'll be fun. I mean, you know, it's the off season. Like you said, there's no grind like the slow grind. I'm down with it. But, John, you know me. I only care about the people that really rocks with us. Like well, our guy, Dan D. With, uh, 14 comments. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, you know, like our guy, Dan D, who literally just posted on yesterday's show. Just want to give you guys a shout-out, man, on a great podcast. Love the topics and conversations. Keep up the great work. So, you know me. Those are the conversations that I love to have. But, you know, I love it all. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad. I don't take none of this personal. It is what it is, man. But if you down for it, let's start inviting some of these fans on Locked On Texans. Absolutely. Definitely got to get Sarah on, right? But, uh, you know what, Most Cody? They was, uh, they was eating you up in the comments on the prompt, <laughs> Pumping the Break show that we had earlier in the week where Cody and I dived into Davis Mills and is it time to pump the brakes on the hype train? Um, yeah, Cody, I was on the side of why are we pumping any brakes? There's nothing to pump. We don't have a new, uh, you know, a guy to run the train. Cody was a little concerned from Davis Mills due to practice, and they kind of lit you up in the comments. <laughs> Tremaine Allen, Cody, you sound like a hater. You think Brady is perfect in practice? I'm going to continue that with – Spring training, rain, humidity, humidity, give me a break. Uh, if anybody needs to pump the brakes, it's Cody. Calm down. Take a chill pill. Uh, we're going to continue with Cody. You do realize you come off pretty negative. And all of this is kind of new. New players, new playbook. Come on, bro. Um, I think we have maybe one more here if I can find. Uh, oh, I'm not sold on Mills yet, but it is May, all caps. This is from Daryl Ross. Now, we're having a conversation in July and August, then that would be a concern. But you want to respond to these comments? They, you know, they getting on you out there in the streets. I can't help you right now because I'm on their side. While we're not pumping no brakes and no train, we keep it going. Well, what I would say is this, you know, what I was able to see during the first day, as I mentioned, first day of voluntary OTAs, and I did mention this in that podcast as well. Yes, it's still early. Yes, it's May. Yes, it was by far, you know, bad weather conditions or whatever the case might be. But going into watching Davis Mills in practice during the first day of OTAs, I went in there with the mindset of thinking that I was going to see the Davis Mills who finished out the season. The Davis Mills that I saw looked damn good, rather that be doing practice or during the last five games where he threw for what, almost 2,000 yards? I think he had like 10 touchdowns and, and, and two interceptions somewhere along those lines. The Davis Mills that made a lot of us, including myself, and I still do to this day. And by the way, John, listen to the viewers, I'm never jumping off the Davis Mills train. I'm going to ride it until it falls off the rails. However, with that being said... <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, I thought I was going to see that version of Davis Mills. But what I will say to Davis Mills that I did see 
on Tuesday sort of reminded me of the Davis Mills that I saw early on in the season. A Davis Mills that's 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 not as consistent. A Davis Mills that looked like he was struggling just a little bit to make his reads. Now, once again, I understand it. You're talking about I'm comparing this to a guy that was already in midseason form. He has already found his strive to a guy that, you know, even though he did have an opportunity to work out with a lot of his receivers. That was the first time that he was really going going through seven on sevens and 11 on sevens. And yes, that is Russ. But that was just the mindset that I was having. I'm not jumping off the train. I'm forever going, like I said, I'm going to forever be part of, part of Team General Mills. And by the way, saying that I'm negative, John, I'm probably the only person over the last two years to say Cody, Cody there's a possibility that the Houston Texans could win nine to ten games because there's so many toss-ups on this schedule this season. Jalen Johnson, John Bernard has the tools to be one of the best pass rushers in this league, but my man mm. needs to stay healthy. Hmm. That's it. And if you and if he does, he's going to average 10 plus sacks a year and be a pro bowler, maybe almost every year. Hey going to be a key piece for us going forward and we got some guys that can help on the opposite side this year but next year Casario better get a DE to pair alongside him and make his life easier uh, I think there is some optimism optimism in that uh post right there but I do agree with you with this no uh, Casario must get him a DN next year to, to get on the opposite side um you know, we are still waiting to see a healthy season out of John Grenard, but we're not seeing a limited version of him, uh, which is a sort of a, a concern. So he's right about that. We definitely believe, like, if he played those five extra games, he's getting double-digit sacks. That wouldn't hmm. have been a problem. Got to stay healthy, but I, I 100% agree. I definitely believe he has a tool uh, to be a double-digit sack getter in this league. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because it does help me get my day started right, giving me the energy that I need. Sometimes I didn't have the time to kind of prep everything that I need. It's great for on the go, and it also helps with more energy. It optimizes the immune system. I hate taking pills, so it's a supplement that tastes great, and I wanted to see what all the hype was about. I'm not going to lie. Got it in the mail, saw green powder, was kind of resistant at first. Got my care package. I'm thinking to myself, well, the least I can do is check it out. So what is AG1? What is this athletic green? One scoop, one delicious scoop of AG1, and you're going to absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, and probiotics to help you start your day right. Special blend of ingredients support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging, all the things that you want to make sure you take better care of once you get older. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Supports better sleep quality and recovery. It supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best thing. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. You guys know you may like them, but platinums, those Coronas, it's cheaper than that. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in a one-in-all, all-in-one nutritional insurance. Don't want to miss out on this. To make it easy, look... Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back in, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers out there. It's Friday. We're getting prepared for the weekend. You know what I want y'all to do? Hmm. Have fun. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your little ones. 
If some little ones are watching this show, enjoy the big ones. Enjoy the people you love. Enjoy doing the things that you love. I know it's a lot of craziness going on right now, but that's one thing that I believe Cody can attest to this. He's been knowing me for a very long time. Listen, do what makes you happy, right? Because one thing you do not want to do is regret the past. Hmm. Now, speaking of regretting the past, the Houston Texans, they made some bad decisions in their franchise history in only a short 21 years. 20, <laughs> oh, 20 years now. 20 yeah, years. 20. Um, that could have propelled them to the promised land. And so as we're sitting in this slow grind news type of day where it ain't much of nothing going on, trying to find topics to discuss, and on top of that, it's Friday, so we normally like to get a little bit funner on Fridays. You know what Cody and I were thinking? Well, what is the biggest regret that the Houston Texans may have in their franchise history? And you know what, Cody? The summer of 2012, uh, the general, the sheriff, uh, the man with the big head but also with a lot of touchdowns mm -hmm. played in this same division, ripped this franchise apart year in and year out. I'm talking about Peyton Manning mm. was a free agent, got cut by the Indianapolis Colts due to injury history. And uh, there's some research on that. They have, they almost had to pay him $28 million before a certain date. And he didn't get it. But uh, that summer, Peyton Manning was looking for teams to continue his career. And there was a lot of worry about that shoulder, whether or not he was going to be able to play. Uh, I think the consensus thought around the league at that time was Peyton Manning was going to be all right, which he was, hmm. won an MVP after that. He had an opportunity. Oh, no. The Texans <laughs> had an opportunity to sign the sheriff, Peyton Manning himself, uh, and didn't go their way. They stuck with Matt Shaw. Now, at that time, that was a roster, ladies and gentlemen, that was headlined by J.J. Watt in 2012, Andre Johnson in 2012, Arian Foster in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so Antonio Smith who was on that team in 2012. Um, let's see, James Casey was on that team in 2012. Uh, Kevin Walters was on that team in 2012. Owen Daniels was on that team in 2012. Dwayne Brown, Wayne, uh, Wade Smith, Chris Myers, Ben Jones, Derek Newton. On the opposite side, like I said, J.J., Antonio Smith, Brooks Reed, Brian Cushion, Connor Baldwin, Kareem Jackson, Jonathan Joseph, Daniel hmm. Manning, Glover Quinn. This team was primed. I mean primed. For a real shot at the Super Bowl. Now, they did have Matt Schaub, who had a great year that, that year. And uh, Matt Schaub did have over 4,000 yards, 22 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Uh, however, that following year, I mean, injury stricken, was a very injury stricken team. Matt Schaub only played eight games, uh, Area Foster only played in eight games. Uh, also, that next year, they drafted. DeAndre Hopkins, go figure. Uh, he had 800 yards. Andre Johnson had 1,400 yards. Like, this team had talent in the time span from when they could have signed Peyton Manning to when Peyton Manning won his Super Bowl and sailed off in the sunset. I think, to this day, that was the biggest mistake in Texan history simply because of two things. You get Peyton Manning, you win a Super Bowl, plain and simple. That defense was stout, was a top five defense in the league during that time. A Peyton Manning's era in Denver, I want to say two times, maybe three in that time span. And you know there was a ceiling with Matt Shaw, but they decided to stick with the guy that they knew wasn't going to get him over the hump. And I love Matt Shaw as a quarterback. I thought he was a very good, one of the great, great-ish game managers that he was. I think he was a game manager to an extent. Could have won Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning wins one. Texans don't. And the biggest after not signing Peyton Manning is that was your defining moment as a franchise to be able to consistently win over 
big free agents. If they sign Peyton Manning in 2012, I think that Houston can consistently bring in big name free agents. Didn't happen. And for me, Cody, I think that was the biggest mistake in franchise history. You know what, John? It's funny because I think over the last 20 years, each decade has a I think we can all agree that the biggest mistake that this franchise made ended up being the decisions that they made at the quarterback decision. You look at the 2010s, you know, you you just mentioned Peyton Manning. Um, I mean, the 2000s, unless, they could have went with unless, un, un, unless, you know, something crazy happens and Davis Mills end up being better than Deshaun Watson and then they piss him off and he leaves and, you know, it could be the Davis Mills. But, you know, as of right now, Nine times out of 10 in 2020 is going to be forever remembered as, you know, them pissing off Deshaun Watson and he won and got of Houston. But to me, the biggest mistake in franchise history is, is what you just finished talking about. Not drafting Vince Young in 2016. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know Vince Young. 2006. As, no, 2006. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I understand that Vince Young did not live up to the hype that he had coming out of UT did not live up to the ex high expectations all of us had when he got drafted by the Tennessee Titans. But what I will say is this, I think what hurt Vince Young was the fact that he was, he was coached under Jeff Fisher and those two was beefing for a extremely long time throughout his entire tenure with the Tennessee Titans. And for him to, overcome all the foolishness and the shenanigans because if i'm if correct me if i'm wrong john jeff fisher never wanted vince young it was ownership so he was basically just throwing him out there just because he was trying to sabotage that man's career and despite all the foolishness and the shenanigans we did see a glimpse a glimpse of hope from vince young because he still ended up being what a two three time pro bowler in tennessee leading him to the playoffs but john had the Houston Texans drafted Vince Young, I really do believe that the last 15 years of this organization would be completely different. Because if you draft Vince Young, you would have paired him alongside Andre Johnson and you would have had a daily quarterback wide receiver duo for the next, what, eight years? Plus, you just finished mentioning how... During the 2012-2013 season, how they could have had an opportunity to sign Peyton Manning, one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. But had they drafted Vince Young, there would be no need for them to go out and pursue Peyton Manning. And by the way, during that time frame, during the 2011-2012 frame, where you can arguably sit here and say that this was arguably the best two-year two -year stretch in Houston Texans history when they went 22-10, and 10, Vince Young would have started to reach the peak of his quarterback potential in the NFL. And what were we saying during this whole entire tenure of the Houston Texans of them going 22-10, and 10, losing in, in the divisional rounds, and back-to-back -back season? If they only had a quarterback. They had that opportunity in 2006. I don't care what nobody say. If Vince Young, I don't care if it's Houston, New Orleans, or whatever the case might be. If Vince Young do not start his career being hampered in, in, in dealing with the shenanigans of Jeff Fisher, his career would have went 10 times better, especially if he was able to represent for his hometown. You know, how many times did you just say shenanigans just now? A lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, you're too young to be saying shenanigans that many times. I'll tell you that. <laughs> because that it's the truth, though. You're too it's young. the truth, and, and and that's and that's the issue I have with people want to automatically say that Vince Young is a bust. I'm like, is he a bust? Okay, I, I think we could kind of. Well, he, 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 is he because does. He, he does have a winning record as a. Starter. Yeah, he has a. But that's and that's what I was going to like. Look at everything that he had to deal with in Tennessee, playing for a coach that did not want him, but yet he was still able to overcome all that and be what a two, three time Pro Bowler has a rented record. He still shows some promise. If he was in a better situation, his career would have been a lot better. And there's no way you anybody can tell me that if the Texans did not draft this young, I, I, I don't. 
don't want to go as far as to say they would have won the Super Bowl, but there's no way in hell you could sit here and say that this organization would not have been one of the best teams for over the last decade. And by the way, if you draft Vince Young, that would have saved you from a lot of other shenanigans that you got yourselves involved with midway through the 2010s all the way up until where we are now. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, as much as I love Vince Young, I think his issues with ball placement and interceptions would have been – Maybe the same uh, because of the league was not adjusted uh, at the home. Oh, the league wasn't adjusted, wasn't adjusting to the Vince Youngs of the world coming out around that time. So we saw the league really adjust when Michael Vick came into the league in the early two thousands, mm. and then the next time we saw that league adjustment, I think, and if I'm missing someone, maybe correct me, was Cam Newton. That was a huge gap of when. Not and it wasn't the league, it was the team saying, We just drafted this athlete at this position, we're gonna do whatever we can to get the best out of him. That was and and, and whenever uh Michael Vick was drafted, that he was one team of 32 teams that said we're gonna conform and adjust for our quarterback. Then years later we see it out of uh out, out of Cam Newton, where they adjusted consistently and had the offense built around them. And so I, I do think Plain and simple, Vince Young was just a product of misfortune being drafted in 2006 and not 2016. Another regret that I know this organization has, and of course this is probably the biggest one of all, is um, allowing Bill O'Brien to take the helm as general manager. Mm, that's not that and firing and firing their capologists. That was because that was bad. That was bad. The money, the money during that time when DeAndre Hopkins got traded, he wanted a new contract. And they tried to justify it by saying that they got to pay Larry Mitonso. Of course, Deshaun Watson was up. If you had a capologist, you could have got all three of those deals done. And we are not sitting here talking about the Houston Texans rebuilding on May 27, 2022. That that's another big mistake that they had. And by the way, I think they would have had an opportunity to re-sign and keep other guys that they let go in free agency or have to trade for a bag of chips because they didn't have a quote unquote enough money. Firing your cap uh, capologist, John. I think that was that, yeah, that was, was doing the Chris first Olsen. time. Yeah, that was like the first big story that you and I covered here on the Locked On Texans podcast mm -hmm. when we took over. And I remember you saying this is not a good idea, and <laughs> they're still reaping the benefits of it. Yeah, during that time frame with no capologists, Whitney Mercer's got a, a ridiculous contract. I, I want to say uh, Eric Murray that contract. Uh, contract. Uh, you you, you let was, DJ Reader walk, and I still think this is a team that missed DJ Reader. Absolutely, absolutely. We're gonna dive into what pro football focus what they said who is a better quarterback maybe on the market than who Houston has right now. The hell y'all talking about? Y'all stick around for more Locked On Texas. Thanks for making Locked On Texans your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL Podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. So follow Locked On NFL every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Friday installment of Locked On Texans. And John, another day, another company, person, disrespecting the Houston Texans and the quarterback in Davis Mills. As you guys know, Colin Kaepernick had an opportunity to work out for the Las Vegas Raiders. I wonder how that went too, man. They said it went really good. There's a <laughs> real chance, a real possibility that Kaepernick could be invited to training camp. I see you, Josh McDaniel. I see you, Josh McDaniels. See you, boy. But, John, a very respectable football analyst, football personnel, football media type, pro football talk. And I feel that somebody, I don't know if somebody's trying to push a narrative or 
they was hiding behind their true feelings. But Pro Football Talk, and this literally came from their Twitter account, tweeted, Colin Kaepernick, with time to knock off the rust and preparation, would be a better quarterback option for the Seahawks, the Panthers, and the Texans. He's better than any quarterback that the Miami Dolphins currently have, and he will possibly win the job in Atlanta too. Now, John, as for Atlanta, Seattle, Carolina, don't really know too much. Oh, and Miami as well. Don't really know too much about their quarterback situation. But, John, right here in the city of Houston, a guy that I just finished talking about in the first segment, yes, I had just a little bit of concerns. But there is no way in hell Colin Kaepernick and the Houston Texans should join forces. It doesn't make any kind of sense. And you know me, John. It doesn't matter who the player is. My biggest thing is with the Houston Texans being in this stage of the rebuild, where they, they're showing some promise, but we still know oh, this team is still not that good. What would the Houston Texans benefit for signing Kaepernick, who is, what, 35, 36 years old? And what could he provide this organization? Great PR. Hey, y'all just saw Walmart with the Juneteenth ice cream, right? Hey, if the Texans sign Colin Kaepernick, they ain't gonna have to pull that off the shelves. You can go ahead and put Kaepernick, <laughs> Kaepernick out there with a number seven jersey. You may even can throw in some black, red, and white stitching on the jersey. That'd be great PR. Listen, for the longest, this franchise was accused of. Uh, well, remember the "Can't Let the Prisons Run the Warden" conversation that the late. Uh, Bob McNair had, and then the you don't want to hire Eric enemy Is this franchise racist? And all of that nonsense that came with it. Well, for Nick Asario, I mean, George Warhop, uh, the promotion of Pep Hamilton, the hiring of Lovey Smith, the hiring of David Cully last season. Uh, <laughs> he's changing narratives right now. And if you want to keep that trend going, then Colin Kaepernick getting signed to the Houston Texans would be great PR. And listen, he doesn't even really have to make the roster. If Cap plays in at least one preseason game, that's great PR, right? We are the franchise that put him back on the NFL field for everybody to see, and we can go from there. it will be better than what Walmart did with that Juneteenth. Oh, who wants Juneteenth ice cream anyway? But anyways – to get back to being serious, <laughs> listen, guys, Kaepernick, you cannot say a person is better than the other person when we've seen a person at least do a job in the last year. We haven't seen oh, Cap play football in over five years. Uh, I still don't believe he'll play in the NFL again. If it does happen, maybe it'll be. Uh, with the Raiders, who's giving him a shot at who had a, a good practice, they said it was good, it turned out nice. Uh, but for Houston, I cannot see, I was joking, but I cannot see another reason to sign Colin Kaepernick with Allen on your Kyle Allen, Jeff Driscoll, uh, who am I missing on the, in, on the quarterback room for Houston? Um, they have they're carrying four quarterbacks right now to add a fit in a room that generally only carries maybe two on game day, sometimes three, depending on if you're starting a rookie and he's thinking it up or you have like an undrafted quarterback that has to get some playing time. You know, you generally only carry two on the roster on game day. So outside of PR, this move wouldn't make much sense. No. And look, you're talking to a guy who is a huge Colin Kaepernick fan during his time with the San Francisco 49ers, I did believe that he was up next because that run he had, what was that, in 2012, 2013, when 49ers lost to the Ravens in New Orleans during the Super Bowl, I really thought that he – I really thought he was he was projecting to go in some great places. But um, I, that – and that's my biggest fear. Like, if, if Kaepernick was to get an opportunity, rather that be here in Houston or whatever the case might be, 
I would like to see him get a realistic opportunity. Not we just going to sign him as a pun and say, hey, guys, we are not racist. Hey, guys, we are trying to push this narrative. No, if you're going to give him an opportunity, give him opportunity based off the quarterback skills that you believe he can bring. Whether that be a starter, whether that be a backup, or whether that be a third string that you got to, you know, keep around. Because, look, COVID numbers are going down and possibly, you know, it seems like it's not going to be a problem. But it's still out there. And you never know, you, you, your quarterback room might get hit with COVID and then boom, you got to call Kaepernick up from the practice squad. But, you know, John, I say all that just to say, if he gets a real opportunity, I want it to be a real opportunity, not some kind of like pun opportunity. But, you know, Houston Texans, four quarterbacks, you got Davis Mills, you know, if Davis Mills stank up the joint, do you have an opportunity to use your first round draft picks to draft one of the top quarterbacks coming out of next year's class, which is going to be damn good and very exciting. So, you know, there's there's nothing the Houston Texans can gain from signing him. And by the way, yes, there's going to be some good PR from signing Kaepernick, but there's also going to be some bad PR as well. Yeah, I also want to say this. The quarterback room right now is Kyle Allen, Jeff Driscoll, Kevin Hogan is who I couldn't remember. Uh, but I also want to continue with, I'm not saying that this team is trying to rebuild a possible uh, racist image. I'm not in, in no form or fashion saying that. Uh, but again, I don't believe that a union between those two parties would make sense outside of just good PR. Hmm. Thank you guys for checking out today's episode on this great Friday. I'm John Hickman. This is Cody Davis, of course. Make sure you are following us on Twitter at Locked On Texans. Subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube. And if you guys think we're sticking up the joint, then we'll go ahead and say y'all want to get in on this. We can talk football on a serious note. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. Again, guys. Enjoy your loved ones. Enjoy doing what you do. We'll see y'all Monday. Yes, sir. And you can always follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.